Have you ever thought of putting a bog in your garden? Seems like a crazy idea, but there are some very good reasons for doing it. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about bogs. Well, it turns out that the scientific definition and the definition used by most gardeners is slightly different. The scientific definition says that a bog is an area that is wet, spongy, and acidic, consisting chiefly of sphagnum moss and peat. The acidic part is critical there. If we ask a gardener to define a bog, he might say this, a garden that is consistently wet but does not have standing water. Notice that this definition doesn't include anything about being acidic or consisting mostly of peat moss. For us gardeners, a bog is really just an area that's moist and stays wet. So why would you make a bog? Well, there are some plants that just do better in a wet area. Marsh marigolds are a good example. You generally find them along the roadsides and in ditches or right beside ponds. But if you take these plants and put them in a regular garden, they just don't do very well because soil in a regular garden is just too dry. But they do really well in a bog. Some plants grow much bigger in a bog garden. A few years ago, I found a seedling for a giant hogweed. Now at the time I didn't know what it was, I just seen these really cool leaves and it was spreading all over the place and I thought, well I'll just take one of these little seedlings home and grow it. I wanted to know what it was. Once it started to grow and I did some googling, it became very clear this is a giant hogweed. It's a fabulous plant and look how big it got. Now notice that it's growing right at the bottom of one of my downspouts. This is a shady area and it's one that stays wet all the time. The flower in there is just huge. Now if you don't know what this plant is, it's actually a fairly dangerous plant and it's quite invasive and you really shouldn't plant it in a garden unless you know what you're doing. It is a biannual, so provided that you don't let it set seed, it will die after flower. And that's exactly what happened to my plant. I had it one year and I made sure that it didn't produce any seed, but it's actually a fabulous plant. This may surprise you, but a bog needs less watering than your regular soil. So if you find that you're watering your garden a lot because it dries out, a bog might be a good solution for you. It's counterintuitive because you'd think that you have to water a bog all the time to keep it wet. But if you build it properly, you hardly ever have to water it. This picture shows my first bog, and it's in full sun, and I never water this thing. It is mulched a little bit, but the way it's designed keeps it wet and we get enough rain so that I never have to water it. All right, so how do you make a bog? Well, step one is that you have to dig a hole. If you're just building a small one, you can use a shovel. The ones I built are mostly larger and so I got in some heavy equipment and I just dug the hole myself. You want to go down at least a foot and a half and two feet is better, but you don't have to go any deeper than that. Two feet is lots. If you're building a pond, a great place to put a bog is right beside the pond. When you're building the pond, it's really important that you decide where the water will go if the pond overflows. Now that might happen because it rains a lot, or it might happen because you're like me and you just left the hose on a bit too long and went in for dinner and it started overflowing. You want to direct where that excess water goes and you don't want it flowing over the top of the pond. So I have a little spillway on the side so I know exactly where that excess water is going. Another place to put a bog garden is near your downspouts or the house, anywhere that water is collecting. In fact, you might have heard of something called a rain garden. And a rain garden is fairly similar to a bog garden. I'm not really clear what the difference is. A rain garden is usually not lined, whereas a bog garden will be lined. That's probably the biggest difference. Here I'm building a large bog in a wooded area. And so we dug out all the soil, made a large hole, and then we line it with this plastic. And I just use cheap builder's plastic. You don't need a pond liner here. Put the plastic in, and the next step you have to do is poke some holes in it. I tried to figure out how many holes I needed. I went all over the internet and asked people. Nobody really knew. Everyone just said, poke some holes. So I did. I don't know how many I poked, but I used one of these forks and maybe pressed down a dozen times to make these little holes. And that seemed to work. I still don't know what the correct number is, but make sure you put in more than a couple holes. And then it's time to fill the bog. And there's a couple of options here. You can go out and get special soil for this. 
So something like triple mix probably be pretty good for this because it has a lot of organics in there and particularly in the shade garden, a lot of those plants love that organic in the soil. The problem with something like triple mix is that two thirds of it is organic material. One third is actually soil. Organic material slowly decomposes. So over a number of years, this settles. And if two thirds of it is organic, you're gonna end up with a level that's only one third of how much you put in. And so this is a reason I never use triple mix anywhere where I don't want it to settle. So things like patching holes in a lawn, or if you're doing raised beds, triple mix is a great soil, but it settles. So you're gonna to have to fill it up every year. In those places, you really want to use real soil. So I would go out and get yourself some topsoil. The other alternative is do what I do. I take the soil out and whatever I have, I put back again. I'm not going out to buy soil. I've got lots of it and it's not horrible soil. If you want to add a little bit of compost in there, you can do that. But you basically want to put soil back into that hole. All right, so here we've got a bed. We've got the plastic sticking up and Make sure you have extra plastic so it comes up around the edge. And the area right in front of you in the picture here is the bog area and it's now full of soil. Then go around the edge and cut that extra plastic off. And I cut it a couple inches below the soil level. You don't want to see that plastic and we're not trying to hold water in here permanently. So if a little bit seeps out, that's okay. We just want most of it lined with plastic. Oh, and by the way, if you have a bigger one and you need two pieces of plastic, just overlap them by a couple of feet. You don't have to seal those in any way. Remember, you're poking holes in the bottom anyways. So here's this bog garden that's in the shade a few years later. I've got a number of primulas growing in there and a couple of ferns. And what I like to do is I like to edge it in rock. So you can see this row of rocks going along here. The reason is that once you build the bog and you've cut the plastic off, you don't know where it is. So if you put rocks around the outside, you kind of outline it. And then, you know, three years from now, when you're standing there with a plant and you're saying, well, I want to put it in my bog garden. But is that like a foot that way or is it a foot this way? You know where the bog garden is. So why does this thing work? So here's a cross section of a pond and we've put in our black pond liner and it's waterproof. So in a pond, the water has no place to go. All right, well, let's replace that water now with soil and we put some water into that soil. Well, it still doesn't have a lot of places to go. What happens with water and soil normally is that it actually migrates quite a bit to the side, especially if you have clay type soil. Some of it will run down and out those little holes at the bottom, but most of the bottom is still plastic lined. So this is very similar to wearing a diaper, right? The water has no place to go. And so what's inside the diaper stays wet. And that's exactly what happens with a bog garden. The soil inside of this stays wetter than the soil outside. So in fact, you have to water this a lot less than your regular garden. The first bog garden I showed you, the one with the iris, it's sitting in full sun all day long. It gets no shade whatsoever. And I almost never water that garden. In a really, really dry year, it might get water added once, but most years it gets no water at all. The rain coming down is enough to keep that garden moist. Here's a picture of the one in the shady area. And you can see the outline on the soil. It hasn't rained for a few days and the rest of the ground is getting pretty dry and gray looking. But the bog area is still wet and I don't water much. So this is just natural rain. The area at the bottom of the screen is the bog garden. It's still got lots of moisture, but the area outside the bog garden is already starting to dry out. Now you can make other types of bog gardens. Here's a couple. This one was actually made by my brother. It's a, like a raised pond or a raised garden. He lined it with plastic, put in a lot of soil. Now he actually keeps a bit of water in the front here. So this part is like a very shallow pool. It's a couple inches deep. But as you move towards the back of the pond, the soil is higher. And so he can grow bog plants back here and near the front he can grow things that like to be even a little wetter. Now some of you might be concerned that this kind of a setup will attract mosquitoes and we don't want mosquitoes in this thing. 
but he found a really simple way to control mosquitoes. He just keeps a couple of alligators in there. They're just baby ones, but that's enough to control the mosquito population. Here's another idea that I haven't tried, but should actually work pretty good. So you'd like to try this, and you just want to make a little bog garden with as little effort as possible. Get yourself one of these bags of peat moss. It's a rectangular shape. Dig a hole and put it in. Now you can either put it vertically like it's shown in the picture here, but I'd probably lay it down on its side so that you have a larger area to work with, but it's not quite so deep. Then cut the plastic off the top of the bag and you have an instant bog garden. It's plastic lined. It has peat moss inside, which most of these plants love. And there you go. It's really easy. Oh, by the way, poke a few holes in the bottom before you're finished. So this is my shade bog garden. And when I first made it, I didn't really have a lot of plants to put into it yet. So I thought, well, I'll use it for something else. And I grow a lot of things from seeds. And this is how I usually grow them. So the seed starts inside in the winter time. This time of the year, I've got lots of little pots with little seedlings. As soon as it gets warm enough, they'll go outside. And then I have a problem because I like to grow them in these pots for a year or two because these are perennials. They don't grow as fast as annuals. So if you're used to things like tomatoes, you know, they grow really fast. Well, some of these perennials may grow two inches in a year. Others are a little faster than that, but some of them are quite slow. So I leave them in the pots for a year or two, but they're a real pain to water. So what I do now is I just sink them in the ground and that way I have to water a whole lot less. And if I do that in a bog garden, they actually stay wet for weeks. Here's another bog garden that I built. And I had this great idea. I'm going to combine a pond with a bog garden with a bridge. I love bridges, so I've, I've got about a half a dozen bridges around the property. And this is a Japanese designed bridge. So I wanted to build this area, and I'm going to show you how I went about it. So the first thing I did was I dug a large area and went down about two feet, lined it with the cheap plastic that you see here at the top of the slide, started filling a bit of soil back, and now I want to build the pond area. Well, the pond areas need to have a different kind of liner. You want a really good liner. If you're ever building a pond, Buy the right stuff. Don't cheap out on this. It's a lot of work and you don't want to go and patch holes. So the black plastic here, this is a proper rubber liner for a pond. And what I did is I laid it down, put some carpet pieces over top of it, then these patio stones, and this is where the legs of the bridge are going to sit. So here the construction's moved along a little bit. You can see the outline of the plastic for the bog is quite large, covers most of the slide. The pond is a little smaller on the inside, and I'm in the process of building this bridge. Now I got this great idea that I would make a different kind of pond, because I already had a couple ponds, and those didn't have soil in the bottom. They were just clean with the rubber. And I thought, well, you know what? If I make a pond and I have some soil at the bottom, I'm sure there are some plants that would love to grow into this wet soil. So the idea here is that it's going to have maybe six inches of soil, and then there'll be six inches of water above that. And that would be a great environment to grow some new types of plants. It was a great idea on paper. So here I am filling it up. It's almost finished here. So I had this for a number of years, and it was a great idea. There are lots of plants that love to grow in that kind of a condition. Six inches of soil, six inches of water. And weeds. Weeds just love that environment. In fact, the left side of this bridge is currently just full of bulrushes that have seeded themselves naturally. And they're just going crazy in that environment. What I found was that it's so weedy, I can't keep up with containing the weeds. So the right side has been completely redone, and I took all the soil out of the pond area. And this summer, I have to do the left side try and get it back to be just a pond with just water and no soil in the bottom. But all the way around this pond is a bog garden, and this area stays nice and wet. All right, so that's a bog garden. They're pretty easy to build. As far as maintenance goes, you don't have to treat it any different than any of your other gardens. Planting, mulching, 
everything is done exactly the same. The only difference is that you can select specific plants for a bog garden that like it a little wetter. And in my next video, I'm going to discuss some of those plants that really love bog garden. When that video is available, I'll put a link to it in the top right hand corner. I hope you give bog gardens a try. They're a lot of fun.